Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and we continue with my journey to complete Ark Survival Evolved and all of its DLC and we finally made it to Extinction. We've completed both Rockwell with the complete crew and in a solo playthrough but we're going to continue on to Extinction as a group and do this one together. With the release of Fjordor, we've now got a few new conditions wildcard have set for fully completing this game. One of which is leveling up this chibi, but we're going to have to go back and collect dossiers and we're going to have to get to a level 190 if we want to win Thor's Hammer. And I do want to get to that point before the release of Ark 2. And to be honest, it's going to be very difficult to do that in both solo and doing the 100 days content as well. So we've decided, myself and the complete crew, that we're going to do Extinction instead finish off what we've started and then when we start Fjordor we'll have tech we'll feel like we've earned the tech ingrams because of course now you can also get the capture nets from Genesis 2 and all of the ingrams are pretty much be open to us so we're going to continue there and when we do Fjordor we're going to put that on a community map and also put that on a cluster so we have Genesis 1 and 2 rotating and of course Genesis, I don't want to do that one alone. Let's just make some tools and oh, I've got to do my ingrams, uh, two secs. Okay, yeah, let's just get some metal tools on the go. So what we will do is we'll put Fjordor on and we'll use a cluster and I will come back with some members of the complete crew to do Genesis part one and two, because honestly, I don't want to tackle their maps solo. They really are geared towards group play for throughs, so eventually when we stick them ones on the map, we're going to be doing that on a community map. Uh, let's just get some clothing on, I'll just get some hide. We're really going to need to get some ghillie on the go as soon as we can, because the heat on extinction kind of means we're going to be drinking a lot of water, especially wearing hide, but that's some protection. So the plan today is we need to gather as many resources as we can. We need to get Shazella all of the materials that she's going to need to build the crew a base. And I figured we'd do a little bit of a time lapse while she's building that. And we'll get all of this stuff together and then I can talk a little bit more about why we've decided to go about completing Ark in this way. For now guess we better grab some berries, grab some fibre. We need to get some essential tames we could do with getting a dodic and just grabbing as many resources as we can. Wow, it's been a long time since I've been on Extinction. I haven't played this one since its release. It's quite a buggy map on its release, but still it was one of the maps that I really did enjoy playing. And we've got four guardians to complete on this map works a little bit differently to how the previous DLC worked. There's been so much ARC news coming out as well. Rumours as well of a Scorched Earth ending. Is that level 45? And that reminds me while I'm using that spyglass, we have got two mods on this server. I have done it unmodded, but we have got the spyglass and the stack mod. They're the only two mods we're using. I think at this point you can probably get these maps on console. I'm not 100% sure about that, but they should be added to the game anyway. But there's no way I'm going to get the crew to play with me if they're going to do it completely unmodded. And I personally do want to get this done before the release of Ark 2. Looks like an easy parasaur over here. We just need to get some hide as well. myself a water skin created. I can actually probably do a jar instead of a water skin actually. There's plenty of crystal around here. So yeah, hatchet for hide as always. Keep me going for like five minutes with the amount of water that we've got to consume on this map. But yeah, so I didn't want to be playing through Extinction twice, both in a hundred days and with the solo thing. And solo in arc with no mods really, really does take a hell of a lot of time. And I would like to have this complete on the channel. 
There's also a couple of extra things I want to do, and I'm not prepared to cheat and just put in a code to unlock all of the dossiers. I'm going to have to collect all of them, and I also want to defeat the Guardians on the centre map. Although, I did play on the centre map, and I absolutely love that map. I've never actually gone on to defeat the Degar Guardians of that map, so that's also a Steam achievement that I want to get. So, doing it this way, I think, really makes sense for the channel. As excited as everyone is to play Fjordor right now, we really need to get this map con conquered first. And when we finally add that Fjordor map, it's going to be more of a community map. And yeah, it will give me the opportunity to do a lot more tutorials. We're going to have to tame all of the creatures as well, all of the base art creatures. I haven't done every single one, but it will certainly give me an opportunity to make guides on all of that stuff. Okay. So I don't think any of the crew have managed to tame any creatures yet. That's going to be the first job. Plenty of things around here. Seen a couple of stegos. Let's just shove all of this away. So, wild card. I wasn't expecting for them to put all of these requirements in for completing Fjordor. And I really can't wait to get on there. I'm sure a lot of you are all having plenty of fun with it right now. Okay, narcs. We can get some narco berries on the go. Let's just transfer them over. Looks like somebody's made up some water jars, so we'll grab one of those. And it's back to gathering all of the resources that Shez is going to need to put our main base together. Better not forget my hat. And we'll probably get a couple of easy tames, gather as many resources as we can. And then I can do a little bit of a speed build. And that'll be an opportunity to talk about everything that I'm thinking about doing on the channel, what's coming up, and uh, yeah, we can see what she ends up building for the crew. Okay, so we're on to Shezza's speed build, and we'd spent all day, myself and the crew, getting resources together, getting everything that she was gonna need for this build, and the actual time lapse is about four and a half hours long, so she was building this for four and a half hours or more, and even while she's doing this, the rest of the crew is off gathering resources. Because there is like a, a dozen members in the crew. So it really won't take us too long to get through extinction. And I'm really looking forward to tackling the Fjordor map. I would be doing content on it, but it just seems kind of a little bit pointless. Because we all know what the requirements are. And even though the creatures and the bosses that you're going to need to beat are on that map, you still need to go back to the original maps because you can't get ascensions on Fjordor. So the plan is Fjordor will be our base map and we're going to put a rotation map on. And I certainly don't want to do Genesis part one and two alone. So when we put them on the cluster, we can knock them things off there. Genesis will probably make good streaming content. I'm probably going to stream a bit of that, most of that over on Twitch, and I'll probably do the odd live stream on YouTube. Things are getting better on YouTube for gaming live streams. I've noticed that they don't really affect your views as much these days, and people are getting used to the idea of creators going live. I know it's not quite the same thing. It's not like you can stick four and a half of a speed build like this when you're doing a live stream, but it's quite funny to watch this back. I could do nothing to help out the crew at this moment. I just went into spectator mode, but I had really put my part in to get a lot of these resources crafted. It took us all day and I was just up here ordering everyone about. I think I soon ask uh, Vex to go and chop the trees down in the background. Try and make it a better shot. I think, yeah, I think she wanted to quit by the end of this. So, this is a really great way of being an alpha tribe. If you've delegated roles, it's surprising how quick you can make progress. And we each end up with our own rooms. I end up with the penthouse, of course, 
Yeah, there's, there's my roof go on right now. And uh, so we've got a trophy room at the front, just at the side on the right hand side there. That's where our drop off point is. And it like needs to be functional. When you've got this many people, things need to be functional, but you want to make them look nice as well. That room at the front there, I think Shez was mentioning that she's going to make some sort of trophy area. Which is cool. And knowing the complete crew, it won't take us long to get through extinction. And I do look forward to putting one more base together myself. And that's going to be a work in progress when we finally get to Fjordor. Because when it comes to the rotating map on the cluster, whatever we're doing that month we're not going to keep that map so I don't want to be building bases all over the place we can do some outposts and things like that but we really need to win Thor's hammer before arc 2 comes out and my word that is a lot of content I know it's been almost three years of content from myself on arc but it's still a big ask to get to level 190 and truly wield Thor's hammer. So it's pretty amazing this build that she's put together. We've all ended up with our own room. I think everybody's going to be happy here. And looks like by this point we'd already tamed some Argies. And there goes the roof on our drop off area. I guess we'll take you for a tour. And We'll have a little wander around. Of course, there's no lights on. And as you probably notice there, the sun doesn't actually move on extinction. It's really weird. I don't know why the earth is tidally locked. There is no moon, I presume, and the earth is always facing the sun. So the shadow never moves. And there's no explanation as to why that is in the law of Ark. So this place is forever doomed to be in a type of shadow but that was just how they made extinction there wasn't a day and night cycle as such so it was always in permanent daylight okay let's get to a tour so we're back and not even 24 hours has passed and Shazella's managed to build us all somewhere to live I'm in of course the penthouse suite here and it's not finished we need to put finishing touches on put a little bit of furniture around but I'm really pretty shocked because like I say not even 24 hours have passed and this is the amount of progress that the crew has made vexing cat is just underneath me here in the penthouse too and yeah I suspected that she had tamed a monkey she loves doing that she knows how much I love all of the monkey noises coming from next door <laughs> And I'm starting to think maybe I should have taken this room. Look, she's managed to put some doors on the outside. She's got herself a, an escape pterodon. Just in case she needs to run away from all of these noisy monkeys quickly. But yeah, really, really nice. And of course, Shez has managed to put up this greenhouse here. Let's go and have a look at this round build. And of course, it's all plumbed in and ready to go. I'm gonna need to get kibble crafted up and all of that sort of stuff but we need to find tree sap so we're gonna have to go down to the sunken forest still lots and lots of stuff to do so we've got a load of pterodons here i know it probably looks like just as we wander around the base here that the crew's been busy taming lots and lots of things but we really haven't done that much yet so this is our drop off point and crafting area you can reach all of these vaults from the outside so you can drop off outside turn around and use all of the equipment here because of course we're not using s plus so it's better to design your base in this way looks like somebody's tamed a gas bag and we did get one reasonable stat rex so we've all been breeding and just imprinting some rexes but we don't have the kibble or anything so nobody's got a hundred percent rex and we don't have anything that special numbers wise just yet and Things do look a little bit messy with creatures scattered here and there because we haven't got any cryopods yet. To get the cryopods, we need to go and do some drops and nobody's gone into the caves yet. Of course, it's the 
actual orbital supply drops that drop on this map and they just spit out cryopods so I think in the next episode we will try and tackle a few blue drops between now and then get ourselves some cryopods together yeah really really happy with this first build and looking forward to it continuing our journey on extinction but that's about it from myself and until next time i'm james from complete games and i'll see you